know what it is. We cannot identify it. It looks like three silver discs far away. If you take one dime at arm length, that's about the size I can figure out. Uh, then suddenly two vanish, and I mean vanish. Blue sky, I vanish. And one, the time to say one, two, three, make a long circle with crashing green, blue, red, everything on the back towards us, pass between us and the mountain like a, a lightning and went zigzag and disappeared. When he passed, I had a green light in my cockpit, a matter of a, a fraction of a second. And I remember I can see something hard to say, 15, maybe 20, 25 feet diameter, like a disc went under us and disappeared. But the next things, and, and a little tinkling around me, you know, okay, we were tired. And then the thing I see, I look, all my instruments, they were all getting crazy. My uh, Sparrow, uh, Sperry uh, compass was going counterclockwise about that speed. All the other instrument was going this crazy. And I said, of course, I have the answer today. But I said, holy smoke, what's going on? And when, when that took place, my two wings went sky high, yelling, and the interphone, uh, what could, what's going on? Shit, well, I'm back and all that. I said, hey, back. And then I said, no radar, no nothing. Navigation, uh, 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 what can we do? Radio wasn't functioning anymore. Well, lucky when I think about it, our magneto was still going on. That's, a, that's still a, a, a mystery. Because what happened today, I know high, high level of magnetic field. Okay, so fortunately above the mountain, I saw the base far away. Thanks God. So we all land, and you see three exciting guys were going down there. We arrive, and like normally, we had to do our reports. And on our report, we say everything like it happened. And that's why the CEO, when he began to read that, he looked at us, he picked up the phone, and he says, Doc, I got to send you three guys. They got mass hallucination. <laughs> They're very, very tired. Give them a, and we had to go. Uh, and oh, I, yeah, I was mad. I said, what, 20 minutes, blah, 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 blah. And I said, God, no, it's, it's, it's not possible. What's going on? I mean, is, is that a secret weapon, a new secret weapon of the German? The briefing and the intelligence in each briefing should tell us. Nothing of that kind. What is this? We can't fight that. If that's a secret weapon, uh, a weapon of the German, I say, we can't fight that. We lost the war. You know, going gloriously with our plane at 450 miles, you know. So finally, uh, I took the zeal to the hangar and I said, sir, you better tell us what's happening you must know more than we know what is happening. Look, look, look what happened inside of the plane. There was one hour after. The mechanics has to take all those instruments out on the three plane. And uh, he, he went crazy. He said, wow, all this smoke, I, I don't know. Well, if you don't know, you better, have better believe our story. We were grounded four days. The second day, we had some VIP coming early in the morning. We had to be put inside a room, question, oh, Colonel plus his head and everything. Gentlemen, he says, you are not crazy. You are not having hallucination. You have seen the right things. Oh, my God, I said, I'm going to see something. We are going to know what's going on. Yeah, but meanwhile, the aide make us sign some paper, you know. You don't remember everything, you haven't seen nothing, military secret, and that's about it, otherwise the, the, the war is finished for you. Wow. 1945. And that was the end of it. 
And I, I do want to mention that he has been awarded many medals, but his most cherished is the French Legion Honor, which is presented to him in London by President Sargozzi in France in 2010. Let me give you to this wonderful man. Here's John. And he'll also be with us afterwards to uh, do the q and as well. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. What well, can I say? I'm still alive. <laughs> but I have to go back to about 62 years ago, where uh, I don't know if I'm the only one. I don't believe I'm the only one who have experienced what I did and 62 years ago when I was flying a, a P-47 uh, Thunderbolt. This is a kind of plane at that time uh, gloriously doing, uh, it was an almighty jerk. In World War II, I have about 600 hours on that. Maximum speed, 600 miles. And uh, one day I got to one of my, uh, we were flying in recognition, we were three pilots, I was a leader. My white wing, they start to move. We couldn't speak with our radio because we were over the uh, enemy territory, so. And he says, he moved his arm to bring my attention. And he did uh, the Chinese language, you know, he says, let me look at three o'clock, uh, enemy. Boogie. I look at and I see three silver discs. I said, oh, oh God, we, you know, those days we knew what it was flying. The enemy, the allies, everything, but I never saw something like that. Then I was looking like that and suddenly one of those three, the uh, two vanish completely and one make a large circle with all kind of different color on a trail, heading towards me, passed under me and the ground. We were about roughly 300 feet above the ground. I estimated the size of that disc like uh, between 10 to 20 feet in diameter. And it went. When he passed under me, I had the green light in my cockpit and all my instruments start to go crazy. My jury compass was going counterclockwise at that speed. And I said, holy smoke, what's going on there? And uh, that's a long story that I have on my book anyway. It's a long story because um, very rapidly, it took me a couple of years, but I heard a few voices, and I said, well, what's going on? Well, make a long story short, I became uh, telepathic. They were talking to me, and they say, we are people like you, but from another dimension. Whoa. <laughs> and I began to receive all kind of different information. I, I put that on a journal. Later on, uh, I had the help of several uh, experts to put that in a book. But the thing is, well, let's say it changed my life because uh, as an experienced fighter pilot, I was, I was always wondering what was so silver disc that was coming time to time. We had to make reports uh, each time we were coming back from a mission. And, uh, well, okay, so I was saying, what was I saw, you know, it's those discs coming after me. And my CEO came in my ears and he said, you better stop, Rebier. I sent you to the infirmary, you're not really well, you know. If you want still flying, don't put those stupid things. I said, sir, that's the truth. Well, you know, anyway, uh, 
Is there any question, by the way? From anyone want to know a little bit more about those things? Because I can assure you, those things are real. Yes, hey, did the other two pilots see them? On me? Did the other two pilots witness it? Oh, yes, oh, yes. This is about what it looks like. And uh, they were passing under my wing. Unfortunately, uh, they're too fast. And then beside that, we didn't have a, a camera around our neck to take pictures. <laughs> I would have liked that one. <laughs> then they would have closed me for the rest of my life. <laughs> but uh, it, it's real. Uh, I can assure you, um, I hope, and I don't think I'm the only pilot today who has visualized, in fact, those so-called lights in the sky. What was the, uh, what was the gist of Becoming the... telepathic, they told us, follow? What, what, was the gist, what was the gist of the message from the telepathic messages? Oh, uh, I still have, I don't have to go in trance. Uh, it looks like it opened my mind for all the time. What's the purpose? Well, of course, <clears throat> some, a lot of people say you should go to the casino, you will be the winner. <laughs> no, they, uh, they don't answer me all my questions. There has to be something of a great importance. Like, for example, uh, for a while, I think, the top of the story on that matter was, uh, I don't remember the year exactly, and then I went on uh, Channel 3 television because, and even today, it's impossible to predict an earthquake which is going to take place in certain place with even our up-to-date technology, the most you can do is about four to five or six hours before. And I mentioned that seven days before that there would be a terrible earthquake in Chile, Peru. And I said uh, there would be in fact, it took place and 20,000 people died. So, it spooked me. <laughs> How could I say things like that, find out things like that? However, uh, we are not, like I say, the only one in the whole universe. And when I became telepathic to whomever was speaking to me, uh, I always had some very good feeling. I said, well, what is the key of our survival? The answer come, universal love. Wow. It says, until you will make war, you will open the door for the end of your, of your humanity. But, through religion, through personal beliefs, through whatever you want to call it. Love each other and God will save you and your planet. <laughs>